In step two, we're going to take a closer look at how to enter your continuing competence goals into the online member management system. As we talked about across the top, all four competence quadrants are represented, each with its own tab, and the tabs are remarkably similar in nature. There are three parts to each tab. The first part is a little section on the requirements associated with that competence quadrant. Then there's the opportunity to provide and enter your goals. And then the third area is completed activities. This completed activities will open April 1st after the practice permit year begins. So we're on step number two. Let's take a closer look at what's required in entering a goal. First, you will do a self-assessment where you'll determine whether you're acquiring, maintaining, or developing further your skills and knowledge. Next, there's a text box here where you can enter the narrative of what it is you plan to do, what your goal is. Uh, we're asking that you write SMART objectives. Again, you can see the CAP manual for more information on those. And then we ask that you use the check boxes to select which activities you anticipate will be associated with your goal. The last box here, again, is something to worry about after April 1st. This is where you can track your goal to determine whether it's ongoing, completed, or discontinued. If your goal is discontinued, you have the opportunity to explain why your goal is discontinued. Uh, for step number two, simply leave it blank. If we take a look at Dr. Anna Freud's goal, she wrote, I will attend the International Conference on Clinical Child Psychology and Child Development May 20th and 21st in Vancouver, Canada. This is a two-day conference and will address contemporary research on assessment and treatment for children. She also anticipates doing some pre and post reading related to the conference as well. So she notes that Attending this conference is really about her maintaining her current skills and knowledge. And then in terms of activities, this is professional training where the conference falls under. And there's also going to be some self-directed study in that she's going to be doing some learning. So once she's satisfied with this, she takes a quick look up here, minimum eight hours required. A two day conference will easily fulfill those eight hours. So she scrolls down to the bottom, presses save for later. She gets a notification that her uh, professional knowledge and practice has been saved. She goes to the tab. She sees that it is, and she moves simply on to the next tab. She completes her goals in this situation uh, for the area of ethics and jurisprudence. She decides that she's going to have more than one goal. So she simply adds, uses the add button. And she ends up actually with three goals in this area. So note, you must have a minimum of one goal in each area and a maximum of three goals in each area. She does the same for, for professional engagement. And then she comes to the wellness tab. In the wellness tab, it looks a little bit different in that the requirement is that there are three goals. So the boxes are pre-populated to have three goals. There's no need to determine a self-assessment on your goals um, or identify the potential activities. They'll all be in the wellness area. And so it is that straightforward. You can see samples of her goals as well as Dr. Herman Roshak's goals in the how to tech guide for additional information. When she is satisfied and everything is complete, she will simply hit submit and be ready to move on to her practice renewal process. Thank you for watching. For more information, please take a look at the CAP website on continuing competence.